Welcome to ET Now Startup Central, India's first and only daily show dedicated to startup technology and entrepreneurship. I'm Chandra Shrikan coming to you live from India's startup capital, Bengaluru. And let me go to the first story on the show today. It's a big day for India's largest e-commerce firm, Flipkart, because they've decided to launch the first smartphone from their Billion brand. It's called the Billion Capture Plus. We will be getting you details on, uh, you know, the specs, what it means to launch this phone in an already crowded market. But uh, remember, this is an important bet for Flipkart. It's uh, the first, uh, you know, branded product, private uh, product, which typically have more margins compared to other products that they sell on the platform. Uh, so that's why private brands is such a big draw for e-commerce companies. Secondly, smartphone is the largest selling category for any e-commerce company today. So only logical that Flipkart would want to consolidate its position here. But let me go across to my colleague Rahul who's standing by with details of the phone. Uh, Rahul, they've started selling today. Take us through, you know, the main specs, what we can look forward to in terms of price, in terms of features. Uh, uh, Chandra, you know, uh, for smartphone lovers and while you really go out to really shop online, the first thing you look for is the price and the specs. So coming to the price, really, they've launched two variants uh, uh, of the phone Flipkart uh, Capture Plus. One, the 32 GB variant, which is priced at about 11,000 rupees right now. And the 64 GB variant is priced at about 12,999. So, you know, it's uh, and Flipkart, remember, has been positioning and pushing this phone, uh, uh, a smartphone as the affordable category smartphone. But the specs that sort of, uh, uh, you know, differentiated from the other players in the market that are there right now. So to really take you through what this will entitle, they have a 5.5 full HD display screen. Uh, uh, the ROM can be expandable to about 128 GB. Also, they're promising unlimited cloud storage, you know, storage, uh, be it memory is really a big issue as far as uh, smartphone uh, customers here in India is concerned. So that also probably the, uh, the, the partnership that they have with Microsoft, it really helped them off with that uh, unlimited cloud storage. Uh, they have an 8 megapixel front camera uh, for great selfies, uh, but uh, really it's the dual rear camera that they have, 13 megapixel. They have a dual camera really on the rear front. Uh, as far as other uh, specifications are concerned, uh, uh, you know, it uh, also uh, has fingerprint sensor and resolution also that's sort of good. Also, this will really support both your micro and nano SIM. So these are really the specs right now they do have some launch discounts going on where about 8% uh, of uh, uh, you know a discount is what they're offering for cashbacks uh, for HDFC credit debit card customers it's about 10% so Flipkart has made its big bank foray uh, made in India offering as far as smartphone is concerned with this phone we'll have to wait and see how the response will really be because you as you rightly mentioned this is a very crowded space okay to really get a sense of what the response is going to be, Rahul, we're joined on the phone line by uh, Jaydeep Singh, a senior analyst at IDC. He, in fact, is the person in charge for bringing out the quarterly smartphone tracker for IDC. So I think he will give us numbers we're looking for. Um, uh, Jaydeep, you know, your latest report on uh, smartphones spoke about how Xiaomi ha uh, literally beat Samsung uh, to uh, occupy the uh, number one position in India. So we're seeing this battle play out between the Korean and the Chinese players, um, Indian players such as Micromax have obviously taken an impact. Amidst all this, you have Flipkart wading into the game with, you know, a 10,000 rupees smartphone. How is it going to change the game? Will it be a game changer? Uh, what's your own view on what this foray will mean for the smartphone market in India? Sure. Hi, Sindra. I want to correct you uh, for, uh, my name is Jaipal Singh, so I want to correct you here. So definitely, I will see this move as a very interesting move from Flipkart. Uh, market is very crowded, but uh, looking at the India as a country, definitely there is a potential for a newcomer to enter. Uh, if I see online market in the last couple of quarters, definitely the online market has grown a lot. And the key reason why online market has grown because of the aggressive pricing with the specification that gives you one of the affordable price range for the customers. And customers are more comfortable buying online now. So that has really working for when it comes to retailers. So when I see how the Chinese vendors are spending in the marketing and how they are uh, placing their devices very aggressively when it com comes to specification, 
even uh, when I see at the first look of uh, Flipkart uh, phone, it also comes quite close to where the competition is. And I think Flipkart has leveraged uh, their experience when it comes to you know, buying, uh, de- uh, selling devices on their platform and understanding the consumer's preferences. They have uh, definitely leveraged this experience. And this device fits quite close to uh, competition when it comes to pricing and the specification. Yeah. But uh, we need to see uh, more importantly, like, where this goes from here onwards. Because uh, the market is quite crowded, and unless until you don't have a very strong backbone of uh, marketing your devices, and you're not able to spend more on the marketing, it will be very difficult to uh, sustain that kind of pool in the market. And um, definitely in the, in the quarters we have seen, new entries are coming on a regular basis in the Indian market. So it will be uh, not so easy for Flipkart, but definitely it looks like a quite interesting move as of now. Jaipal, if I can just come in there for a Jaipal, if I can just come in there for a minute. So you are saying first cut, it looks like a good product, um, though it's a crowded smartphone market, market. There is potential for Flipkart, but you know, tell us about the back end here. I mean, platform is not a problem. Uh, their platform, they are obviously going to maximize that, leverage that. But beyond that, any risks that you see for Flipkart in terms of distribution, in terms of the other things that will that will determine their reach as far as smartphone is concerned, because it's also fairly saturated market today or do you think there is more potential in this space going forward uh, no i don't think india has a very saturated market as of now uh, when it comes to smartphone our penetration is still around 35 percent so definitely there is a lot of scope to grow so flip flipkart as a platform i will say they have fairly advantage but uh, they are definitely competing against some of the big rivals in the industry you take uh, the name of Xiaomi, you take the name of Lenovo, you know, take the name of the Coolpad. These are some of the big brands in, when it comes to online uh, platforms. So Xiaomi, uh, uh, when Flipkart will be directly compete, competing with these brands. So, uh, and also these brands are quite price aggressive and, uh, when it comes to bringing their devices. It will be see how Xiaomi manages these brands because Xiaomi is also a partner for these brands. So this is interesting while keeping a private label brand and also being a partner of, you know, these mobile phone brand, how Flipkart manages these expectations from here and what. Right. A uh, final question, uh, Jaipal, to you. Um, you know, at a time when Amazon is really expanding in multiple services in India, they're not just uh, hedging their bets on e-commerce. They are also expanding into grocery in a big way. Um, uh, of course, uh, you know, they're already active as far as AWS is concerned. Do you think Flipkart is perhaps relying too much? Um, you know, within e-commerce, on smartphones, on large impl- appliances that has worked for them so far. So do you think it's sort of becoming a one-trick pony, this increasing uh, dependency that we're seeing on smartphones? So definitely, I think uh, Flipkart has quite dependent when it comes to uh, category-wise on smartphones. Uh, while I compare this with Amazon, they are quite widespread. Uh, but this category has helped them well, you know, in the recent past. And definitely there's quite good uh, scope, if I see, in the recent uh, future. But uh, on, the, uh, on the further go, I think Flipkart need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, diversify their portfolio further to, you know, intensify competition, which is happening on the Asian side. Right. On that note, Jaipal, thank you so much for joining us on uh, ET Now. Uh, We hope to touch base with you again in the weeks coming forward once you have the numbers um, as far as uh, billion capture plus is concerned. But thank you for joining us on ET Now. Uh, Moving away from that story, the second story we are tackling on the show today, I mean, fintech seems to be such a favorite theme, um, irrespective of whether it's startups, Indian banks, or even global investment banks. And the latest uh, to really uh, be bitten by the fintech bug, so to speak, is Nomura. Uh, the Global Investment Bank has uh, accepted eight startups um, into its accelerator program, Voyager. And to tell us more about that, we have RK Rangan from Nomura joining us on the show today. Uh, welcome to Startup Central. Just want to start by asking you about uh, the Voyager program and why you think there's potential for fintech startups in India to be part of Nomura's program. You know, this Voyager program is the Nomura fintech partnership program. And um, uh, how it has worked uh, for us is a co-creation uh, initiative. What it really does is the main objective is that there are a lot of t- 
technology startups who are uh, developing uh, functionalities, capabilities, and customizing to industries. Um, so they bring that to the table, their functionality and capability, and we uh, have the domain knowledge. Uh, as, you, as you are aware, the investment banking and capital markets is a very complex, and it has evolved over a period of time, uh, some structurally, some uh, not in a structured uh, manner. So this is uh, one, we believe this is one such program of a dedicated, focused on institutional business, specifically on investment banking and um, capital markets. So that's the overall, and we believe a lot of these fintech startups are focusing on the retail segment of the financial services, and Namura being uh, an investment bank, we thought there is a need. The clear need is, uh, everyone says, uh, uh, the disruption is, uh, is bound to happen with the advent of new technologies. But clearly we believe in Namura, we always stayed ahead of the curve, embracing new trends, patterns, and technology. And uh, we see this as a more than a disruptor, uh, a key enabler, or a great opportunity for us to test out these and bring it into our business and uh, indirectly into the industry. So that's the overall objective with which we launched uh, you know, April of this year. Final question before I go, I'll let you go, Mr. Rangan. Obviously, this is news that startups can use. The fact that Nomura is betting big on fintech startups in India. We, in fact, you know, displayed some of those uh, startups you've selected on the screen. Just take us through what really worked for these startups. I mean, what should other startups be prepared for or, you know, tips and tricks that they can use to make the cut as far as the Voyager program is concerned? But on that, I would like to first mention, uh, for our program being one such, uh, uh, you know, of the series on the institutional side, there's been a huge interest from the ecosystem and specifically with the startup. We started out with uh, working on an application of about 150 startup candidates. And uh, as you can imagine, you know, um, it is a tough task to, uh, you know, filter it out and come to a manageable number. So we had startups, uh, uh, you know, wanting to work with us globally with uh, from startups from UK, uh, US, Israel, and obviously two thirds from uh, India, specifically from Mumbai and um, uh, Bangalore. So there's been a huge uh, interest. Now the interest is uh, clearly driven by, and we have experienced that in the uh, last six months, the, the feedback which we have got from the startup is, they have the domain knowledge on the technology side, but on the business side, they would like to know, because like I said, it's a very complex business. You can't, in a piece of paper, get an end-to-end -end view from uh, customer, enabler, and uh, provider uh, uh, value chain. So the biggest gain, I would think, is uh, the knowledge and uh, the partnership with which they can work with to create a, a product. Obviously, uh, the, the, the second, um, what they will get potentially is uh, work with us and we could become their one of their clients or we will co-invest into their venture and monetize this product uh, at a later date. So there are various options, but the beginning is what they came in to understand our industry and work with us. I think uh, we have tested that out and the startups resoundingly feel that uh, it has been an enriching experience so far. Thanks so much for joining us in this edition of Startup Central, Mr. Rangan. I hope uh, fintech startups are taking note. But on that note, let's take a break and uh, come back with more news how Rolls-Royce is betting big on startups. And uh, we also end by telling you the winners of the Infosys Science Foundation Prize. Uh, lots to cheer about there, considering there were three women winners in the science uh, category. Uh, come back and join us on Startup Center.
Welcome back to Startup Central. Now, Rolls Royce has struck a partnership with TCS on its uh, Internet of Things transformation. But uh, that's not all. They are also keen to work and invest in Indian startups going forward. Uh, remember, IoT is a huge, huge area of interest for pretty much any car maker. My uh, colleague Rahul Dama caught up with Rolls Royce's chief digital officer to find out more about their plans for Indian startups. Listen in. We've got a very proud history in data innovation, collecting data, using data for services maybe over 20 years. And we have our own capabilities we're building internally in terms of analytics and AI. But the, the thing we're working with TCS on is getting a platform, is getting a platform um, from them, which is the um, um, Connected Universal platform, to allow us to collect, to share, and to analyze data and, and, and to actually then use it for the benefit of our customers and for Rolls Royce. So it's that aspect of the services and the tools that come with that platform that TCS provides. And then secondly, we're also buying into um, their incredible resource pool in terms of the skills that we think are really important for using data to create services and, and efficiencies uh, going forward. Also, you know, IoT uh, as an area, there's so much of exciting stuff that's happening globally, connected devices. So it rolls Royce itself, you know, what have you been doing in this area? Because wait, AI, machine learning or IoT in itself is something that no business can ignore right now. Sure. So we, we um, like, like most businesses, we're getting um, going on this. And we already in our services mm. are weaving in AI techniques mm. continually into our services. So I won't go into it, but I mean, um, and this is... Um, this is something which has probably been going on for two years. Yeah. So a lot of the um, increases we're getting in terms of the uh, the predictive uh, um, um, accuracy of our of our existing analytics-based services is using AI technologies. Um, we're also starting to look at how we can expand as many areas of AI and machine learning. We have got a uh, we're putting in rather than investing big time. What we're looking at is getting small hubs of really intense artificial intelligence in hot spots around the world where we can get ecosystems built around us of small companies mm. and ideas. And we are then going to apply those to our problems. So our, our approach to this is always applied based as mm. opposed to theory. Great. So um, we've already started that work. When it comes to the hub we're building in India, uh, a new analytics hub, um, we, we, we see ourselves, uh, that's one of our home countries mm -hmm. in terms of Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. And we see it, uh, we will want to understand more about the ecosystem, particularly in Bangalore, but maybe wider, huh. of how we can build that around us to bring in all the clever ideas and the clever people to work with Rolls Royce. I think in the past, maybe that hasn't been a focus. So I guess startups working in the IoT space, particularly in the auto space, need to take uh, uh, notice of what he said but uh, moving on to our final segment we bring you the winners of the Infosys Prize 2017 now this is an initiative uh, that's championed by the Infosys Science Foundation uh, to really honor researchers and scientists across six teams every year now in its ninth edition today we are just going to take you through some of the winners and the good news is out of the six winners three of them are women uh, so I get uh, morally at least a huge boost for women in science and tech. I'm just going to run you through the winner. So the first um, is uh, Professor Shangamitra Bandopadhyay, Director at the Indian Statistical Institute in Kolkata uh, for Engineering and Computer Science. That's the first winner as far as the Infosys Prize is concerned. Uh, the Humanities category ha uh, was backed by Professor Ananya Jahanara Kabir, uh, Professor of English Literature at King's College London. So that's the second woman winner on the list. The third one uh, for life sciences went to Professor Upinder Singh Bhalla, a professor at the National Centre for Biological Sciences, Bengaluru. So that's the third winner. And uh, the fourth winner for mathematical sciences, that went to Professor Ritabhatra Munshi, Professor Tara Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai, and the Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata. Um, the last two categories, uh, the first one, Physical Sciences, that's the third woman winner, Professor Yamuna Krishnan, Professor, Department of Chemistry, University of Chicago. And uh, the final winner on this list um, is the one for Social Sciences. Now that went to Professor Lawrence Liang, Professor, School of Law, Ambedkar University, Delhi. So that's the list of uh, winners as far as Infosys Prize 2017 is concerned. Hopefully this will give many people a leg up 
those working in the area of research and science. But on that note, it's time to say goodbye on this edition of Startup Central. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned to ED Now for news and updates.